tragedy at Sandy Hook and highlighting the voices of the victims in an effort to promote his gun control proposals. He has not explained to the American people how any of, this new gun, any of these new gun control measures would have prevented that or any other terrible tragedy or how any of these measures would reduce gun violence in any measurable way. Instead, his proposals would serve primarily to restrict the rights of law-abiding citizens. Recently, I launched a project called Protect 2A, an attempt to reach out to those who are reluctant to see changes to our Bill of Rights, to see our Bill of Rights eroded and believe members of Congress should be doing everything in their power to protect the Second Amendment rights of citizens, just as we should be protecting all the rights protected by our Constitution. I'm pleased to announce that the response to Protect 2A has been overwhelming. In less than two days, we've received well over a thousand responses on my website. The vast majority of them recognize that the President's proposals will not make them safer, but will rather result in limiting their rights as law-abiding citizens. It's with this in mind that I would now like to ensure that their voices become an important part of this debate. I have several quotes from Americans across the country who oppose these measures and want senators to stand up for them and their constitutional rights. Roger from my home state of Utah writes as follows. As a veteran, I've had too many brothers and sisters make sacrifices to uphold the Constitution of the United States. Their blood will not be in vain. While I believe our rights are not granted by government, I believe the documentation of these rights in the U.S. Constitution has helped us maintain our freedoms. Why is the Second Amendment important to me? Because without it, the rest of our rights can simply be wiped away. Jim from Louisiana writes as follows. I lived through the Los Angeles riots. My wife and I were living in Silver Lake. For five days, we watched the orange glow of businesses being burned on two sides. For five days, we never saw a law enforcement officer. We were on our own. My wife and I were unarmed. The couple across the street had a pair of shotguns, and the elderly gentleman next to them had a 38 caliber service revolver from his days in the LAPD. After it became clear that law enforcement had abandoned the citizens of Los Angeles, we took shifts watching the street and watching who was coming and who was going. Our neighbors brought us coffee in the middle of the night, a night that was lit with the flames of burning buildings. Twice cars came up our street, saw us armed, and turned around. I have no doubt that the drivers had things on their minds other than getting home to loved ones. As soon as I could, I went out and bought my first handgun. I will not be disarmed. I will not be a victim. And I will not let my boys be, be victims. Legal or not, I'm giving them my guns as they mature enough to use them. If our government is so out of touch that they will make law-abiding citizens criminals, it's just something my family will have to deal with but we will not disarm. David from Missouri wrote the following. I'm a handicapped 78-year-old male living alone. I've applied for and received a concealed carry permit, which I feel is my Second Amendment right. I hope and pray that I never have to use my firearm, but will if challenged to do so. Please don't treat the Second Amendment like you did with my health care by passing legislation that you didn't even read. Carolyn from New Jersey writes this, protection of the Second Amendment is necessary in order to preserve the integrity of our Constitution. The ruling elite cannot pick and choose which amendments they like and which they don't. We the people are sovereign citizens and we are protected by the Constitution. Annie from Georgia writes the following, Dear Senator, how I wish we as a civilized nation did not have to go through this in order to defend our Second Amendment that has been in place for all these years. It is very important that we keep the citizens and uh, that, that we, the citizens, keep our weapons to be able to defend ourselves from criminals as well as to send a message to the government that we are not under any dictatorship. We are a free country and that we are ready to defend our position against anyone who tries to take away what rights we have. To me personally, my guns are my defense to protect my family and I've had to make use of them for that reason in the past, and I will do it again since police cannot be available fast enough. Please protect our rights, because once we lose this amendment, 
we're defenseless and others will follow. I do not want to live again in a country where citizens have no voice, where there is no democracy, and where the people live in fear of what they say. I'm a legal citizen of the USA by choice. I am an American and I love this country like my own. Thanks so much for what you're doing. Let your voices be heard. Mr. President, these are just a few of the excerpts I'd like to submit.